I'm thinking, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but with Fast X, seeing is believing. But maybe DC Studios should make a Lobo movie with Jason Momoa. They've certainly been teasing it. They stopped teasing it because I think they felt it was casting a pall on Aquaman. Although I think this movie is going to cast a pall on Aquaman because who's going to want to see Jason Momoa do anything else uh, after they watch him in Fast X? But with Lobo, I was never, I've never been a fan of the character Lobo, uh, and I've never really been a big fan of Jason Momoa. I always have said he looks like he's a, a, a fan who won a contest to be in a movie. I did think he was good in Aquaman, um, but I, I, he's just never really seemed like a professional actor to me. Uh, and it'd be, I think it's going to take you a couple of minutes to kind of understand what he's doing in this movie. Because again, in the beginning, he just seems like he can't act. He's ridiculous. But he actually is so good in this movie. I, I, I'm convinced that Lobo could maybe be his Deadpool. Do for him what Deadpool did for Ryan Reynolds. I mean, he, Jason Momoa is just amazing in Fast X. He has finally found his calling. Uh, he's even crazier than Lobo here. What he really is, and this was fascinating to me, he is really Dom Toretto's Joker, right down to the flirtatious banter. Ah, oh, it's so cool. He's such a, an interesting and modern character. What Jason Momoa and the team have created here is not only a lot of fun and very well done, but actually very unique. I mean, his Dante is going to be instantly a fan favorite, not only in this franchise, but I think in, in general when it comes to movies. He's that good in this. In fact, Fast X borrows a lot from Batman. They not, Dom Toretto not only has his own Joker, and when you think about it, all the cars here are kind of like Batmobiles, right? But there's even a Batcave in the movie, as you'll see, uh, and Dom's son B, Brian, is a lot like Robin, down to being the boy hostage. Uh, but you'll see, I don't want to give anything away, but I, I really like Dom's son in this movie. I think he's a, a really cool character. But overall, Fast X, it plays like a Saturday morning cartoon, and it knows that it's a Saturday morning cartoon. There's nothing Dom Toretto and his car can't do. And that's not only hilarious, but awesome. Once you accept and buy into that rule, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a Saturday morning cartoon that adults can enjoy. I think anyone can enjoy, enjoy it, but adults can enjoy it. It's like what the G.I. Joe movie wishes it was. Uh, you know, it's so well done. It's very well made, this entry, for supposedly $340 million. That's, that's ridiculously awesome, just like this movie. And I would say that most of that $340 million is up on the screen. Uh, although I also know that one reason that this franchise consistently attracts top talent, like so many times you're like, I can't believe that person would be in a Fast and Furious movie. Well, Vin Diesel pays very well, not just up front, but for the biggest stars, they get a piece of the back end. And you can make tens of millions of dollars off of appearing in these films. Jason Momoa is probably now set for life, as are a couple of other, because, you know, there's supposed to be three of these now. This, this Fast X uh, is a trilogy ending. So uh, Jason Momoa is going to make so much money, as have many other actors in this franchise. And of course, Vin Diesel. My press screening both laughed at this movie, but then also at the same time burst into applause at the end of the Rome sequence. And I did too. It was applause worthy. Uh, it's nonstop action, really. Huge cast, our main favorites, new players, and there's even a surprise, which I hope nobody ruins for you, a new character who was so actually such a perfect fit with the Fast and Furious franchise. Uh, and then also some returning favorites. Now I'm not going to say any. I'm not going to say any specifics, but let's just say all your Fast and Furious dreams are about to come true. Vin Diesel knows what you want, and he actually delivered it. Uh, watching Fast X, you are reminded that this franchise and Vin Diesel, as much as everyone likes to, you know, um, you know, be negative about him, have launched a lot of careers. So I wonder if Vin Diesel can finally get Alan Richson into movies. Although at this point. Richson is so juiced, 
He can barely move his arms, uh, which is a little distracting. But he looks good in the movie, and he looks like he belongs, so I would love to see him get more uh, film work. And so hopefully, just like John Cena and Dwayne Johnson, um, I hope that Alan Richson uh, can use this as a launching point. Uh, and while James Gunn might have given Daniela Melchior her first big break-ish, kind of, because she appears in Guardians as well, and she was very good in The Suicide Squad, but here, Vin Diesel really allows her to shine as herself, as a leading lady, potentially. She has strong Gal Gadot vibes, by the way. I mean, could she be Gunn's Yara Floor back at DC? I feel a strong argument is made for that with this movie. Um, back to my theater laughing during the film. I felt at some points it was a little unfair and mean. I mean, you know what a Fast and Furious movie is at this point, right? I think to laugh at it was cruel. I didn't like that. And as the movie, I mean, some points it was funny. I, I laughed at the movie when it was laughing at itself, but I saw some people laughing at it when I thought it was, you know, not, not cool. Uh, and as the movie started, I got nervous that my press audience had so little respect for this film that they would talk during the whole movie. Like they were talking over the Universal intro. I love seeing the, uh, the, the Universal come around the planet Earth. And I was like, you're ruining it, you jerks. Stop talking. Are you going to talk through this? Like nobody stopped talking. It was like, like speaking of Saturday matinee a cartoon, it was like a Saturday matinee of an auditorium full of kids who like, didn't even notice the movie started. And I was very nervous. But luckily, they piped down because the movie is so loud that it's hard to hear anyone around you talking because it's really, really loud. And then also, good on Fast X because it was so big, so in your face, and so entertaining that it got everybody to pay attention. So that the movie's got that going for it. Now online, ever since the premiere, I've seen a number of people starting to talk about what their favorite Fast and Furious movie is. And I was genuinely surprised to see so many people say that their favorite was Fast Five, which is maybe why Vin Diesel chose to build this movie off of that one. And the opening of Fast X replays with footage from that movie so it can get Paul Walker back in the mix once again, which I think is great. I love that Vin Diesel has never forgotten him and, and you know really keeps him a part of the franchise. So you, you see that, but they also recreate that uh, famous, now famous vault sequence from Fast Five from different angles to show you stuff that you didn't realize was happening, but is now very important to this new movie. But that opening makes sure that if you haven't seen any Fast and Furious movies before, or if you don't remember them, don't worry about it. Vin Diesel will catch you up. Vin Diesel wants your money. So he's not too worried. Uh, you know, he's, he's perfectly fine uh, doing a previously on, basically. And it was a great opening. It was a really great opening. Now, my favorite Fast and Furious movie is by far and away Furious 7, the one where they had to say goodbye to Paul Walker. So moving, which was directed by James Wan. Love that movie. Now, to calibrate our uh, thoughts on Fast and Furious, I'll tell you that I thought F9 was serviceable. A little bit over the top, not the best entry, but still watchable. I hated The Fate of the Furious. I thought that movie was awful. But then as for Fast X, I would say it's as good as Furious 7. I think it's one of the, these are, these are the two best entries in the franchise so far. And I, I would say it's as good as Furious 7 for four reasons, all right? One, Vin Diesel, no matter what you think of him, as I said, he's definitely a good producer, and he has been paying attention to the current trend of action movies ushered in by John Wick. And he's got that here. He's got the globe-trotting locations, the long action takes, elaborate over-the-top action sequences, both fights and car chases, and an amazing soundtrack playing over the whole thing. Two, Jason Momoa, as I said, what an amazing villain. Just a bolt of energy to this franchise, exactly what this franchise needed. Three, Luis Leterrier. I was very, very nervous about changing directors, particularly because Justin Lin, who's directed so many Fast and Furious movies, quit Fast X while they were filming. That was bad. Uh, but Leterrier, and also Leterrier has a very weak track record. I was like, this is who you've gotten to replace him? But Leterrier stepped up. He did a great job. And just after James Gunn's Gu uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, there's some great camera work here. And it makes me wonder if it's thanks to drones, VFX, and advancements in technology just with cameras, the size, the lightness, the mobility, 
Camera work in action movies in particular is getting really good. Oh, I had such a good time. And I thought the VFX here were flawless. Occasionally you were like, okay, that's VFX. But occasionally at the fire on the bomb, you were like, that, that doesn't look very real. But I would say like 90% of the time, I totally bought what I was seeing. And four, this franchise continues to stay true to itself. It's all about family. And sure, that's gotten a little hokey at this point, but you know what? Fast X, as I said, is even able and willing to laugh at itself. I think very effectively. A lot of the villains in this movie are saying how stupid family, and they're like, oh, why does everybody join Dom Toretto's family? And I'm like, oh, it's, it's fun. It was, uh, it was funny. It was very funny. Um, but I have to tell you, bottom line, it's a great message. James Cameron also deals in hokiness and makes a lot of money. So hokiness sells because it's a nice thing. Dominic Toretto is a very kind man. I think his family's fantastic. Uh, and I think that's why he has such a big family and why we keep coming back for more. I mean, I think it's something we like to laugh at, but at the same time, it also makes us feel nice that, you know, you have, not only does he have his family, but he has the family that he made and he sees them all the same. He loves all of them. He's just a really great guy, uh, at least on screen. All right, so anyway, Fast X amazingly ends on several genuine cliffhangers. Like I was like, wow, that's where you're ending this? Oh my gosh, I'm excited to see what happens next. And as I said, Vin Diesel announced, I don't know if Universal agrees, but Vin Diesel said at the premiere in Rome that he's going for a trilogy to end out this franchise. I think Universal only approved two movies, but let's see how this one does. If it does really well, I think Vin will get his wish. Uh, but quite frankly, with the addition of Dom's son, played very well by Leo Abello Perry, he's so cute, he has a big role in this movie, I think that'll make this even more fun for families. But clearly this franchise can go on forever, forever, and I think it very well might. Vin Diesel, again, putting on his producer hat, realized he's getting older, and eventually he's gonna age out at the very least as the lead of the Fast and Furious movies. So he's getting ready to pass the franchise over to the Brian Toretto character in the near future. Maybe at the end of this trilogy, maybe he'll do a time jump to a degree. I think that could be very interesting. And then Vin Diesel can still appear as his mentor, his son's mentor. Um, and then also continue to make money off of the franchise. You know, like what Stallone had hoped to do with Rocky, but unfortunately, you know, it was a different situation. He never got the rights. But, you know, Vin Diesel, the Fast and Furious franchise is his legacy in so many ways. And I think he's doing a very good job protecting it. Also, with some of the people who return, Vin Diesel really gets the last laugh. And that's great. I think that's nice. I think, you know, why be negative about it? Let's all move on. Family forgives, baby. All right, so my favorites besides Momoa, without spoilers, are of course Vin Diesel, the heart of the franchise. Uh, and then I also really liked Michelle Rodriguez. This is as much her franchise as Vin Diesel's at this point. And she is amazing in both her motorcycle and Rome when she's on the motorcycle, she's so cool. And her, her fight scene with Charlize Theron. Theron actually has two great action sequences reminding us how great she was in Atomic Blonde. Uh, John Cena is Uncle Jacob, so much fun. Uh, Alan Richson and Daniela Melchior, again, as I said, were great. Rita Moreno's cameo is small, but so sweet. I liked having her there. And Brie Larson, I know a number of you are very excited for her. Uh, I like who she's playing, great character. And while Larson, I have to be honest with you, she still seems very self-aware as an actress. Like, you can tell she's aware that she's in a Fast and Furious movie, and she's really excited about it. She doesn't disappear into the movie as much as even like someone like John Cena does. Uh, but she has great fashions, great energy, and as I said, she's very happy to be there. So she ultimately, I think, wins you over. I, I liked her character, and especially considering who she's playing, I think it works. As for Tyrese Gibson, Ludacris, Natalie Emanuel, and Sung Kang, you can't have a Fast and Furious movie without them. But they've kind of been turned into the peanut gallery, uh, so they have to do all their scenes together, but they are sprinkled throughout the film. So I think that's a good way to keep them in it because like Vin Diesel, they're like the heart of the franchise, but still ha have enough room for like the bigger names that have been brought on uh, over, the, over the course of the films. So I think, I think, I think it worked. Uh, and Jason Statham similarly only pops up briefly, but he's always great to see. And uh, they kind of like, they say, put a pin in Jason Statham. He's coming back in the next entry. So Jason Momoa's Dante, on that note, is clearly just getting started. What a villain, so dangerous, so funny, so bold. And so, 
As I said, this is the final trilogy, and if this is just the opening act, I can't wait to see where it goes next. It can only go bigger, and I, I can't even imagine what bigger than this could be, but I'm excited to find out. They do a great job not only keeping you in, entertained during the course of the film, but at the very end, making you realize that they're just getting started, and you're like, wow. All right, so Universal, by the way, showed, this, showed us this movie on a small, regular, crappy screen. I was disappointed. I was like, what? But I still had a good time. I still had a good time. But, but I do have tickets to see it again this weekend uh, on a premium screen, as I do think it deserves to be seen. So that's my non-spoiler review of Fast X hitting theaters this Friday. Uh, share your thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.